Glory be to Jesus. So before you sit, we would like to welcome the man of God for this evening. He's a friend of ours. He has preached here several times before. He is a businessman. He's a preacher. He is an investor. And he's a great man of God. And his name is Pastor Mr. Sekeran. Can we welcome him in Jesus' name? That's your pastor. You may be seated. Hallelujah. God is good. I was just sitting there and I was uh, listening to all your feedbacks about what had happened in the last. He was here for three days, right? Monday, Tuesday. No, two days. Sunday, so it's three. Uh, so he said he was here for three days, right? Monday, Tuesday. No, two days. Sunday, so it's three. So you learn how to make money, but I'm here on, on the other side of the pendulum, right? <laughs> I'm here to encourage you to spend and give. So so I don't know how your pastor, you know, uh, I shouldn't say messed it up, but he aligned it. Eh? So let's make money first and then we will spend. Amen. I, mean, I greet you in Jesus' name. I am not a stranger here. All right, so I'm at home and it's good to see all of you. And we all survived COVID. Hallelujah. Uh, that is very important. Uh, people have all kinds of comments now, you know, we are not surviving, oh, this, oh, that. Uh, I don't undermine those statements. But because I know my God and He is and He will. And uh, he's above, and we are above all this, and he has provided, he has taken care. Uh, sincerely speaking, 2020 has been one of the best years of my life financially. Financially. Now, you can only stand and say that when you know the God you have. Not the God of Pastor Peter, but the God that you know in your heart. Okay? Very important. Amen. Very important. Now, before I start on everything, I have two special visitors and guests. I'm going to call them to the front. I never told them that because I know if I tell them, they would not even have come. Especially Kavita. She would have said, no way, no way, no way. So, Kavita. 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 Yes. Mm. Now, both of them are celebs on their own status. <laughs> Celebrities. <laughs> if you know about Cake and Cake Lee, that's the owner, Asha Batenga, right there. <laughs> cake and Cake. Cake, eh? Cakes. Yeah, huh? The company is called Cake Lee. <laughs> cake Lee. And if you know KFN Kampala Food Network, that's the owner right there. Sorry. I want them to say hello and then I will say something after that. Come but to me, me, me. Don't eat into my time. Come. You know, you don't invite people for nothing, right? Hi, everyone. 
You're all looking so beautiful. You clap for that one. Okay. My name is Asha Batenga. Mr. Sekaran is my father. Some of you will say, Mr. Yeah, that is my father. He adopted me. I, am, I was so happy when I heard that he's here to talk about generosity because that is all he is about. I told him this morning that uh, you're the perfect person for this topic, not because you're generous, but because it is your second nature. That is in his nature. Uh, we not get that to <laughs> yes, when you give me the microphone, you have to make sure that you also listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> he is a very good man. I'm not just saying because he's my father. You know, we talk about our parents and we're like, he's good. But I'm telling you, he is. He is what he says he is. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Sekalani's family, my uncle. So, yes, that's all I got to say. Enjoy the evening. Now, because I'm talking about generosity and, uh, you know, I never arranged this. It was this afternoon and this morning that I invited both of them. Because, you know, she does all the caterings. And of course, then Asha does cakes. Uh, but among themselves and between them, they do a lot of giving, taking care of the poor and the needy. So that's why I invited them up here. Now let's go straight to what I want to share. When we talk about generosity, we always think about money. But this evening, I want to actually because of the clock there, one of the things that you and I should be generous as Christians is with our time. Making time for each other is very, very important. I'm not talking about anybody else, I'm talking about me. Pastor, 90% of the quarrel at home is because I don't give time to my wife. You know what, married man, Francis, you know what I'm talking, right? So, uh, I mean, I, I've been born again for 42 years. I've been through it all. If you don't clap, I'll like it because then you're taking my time, please. <laughs> don't, don't clap. clap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so time is of an essence every time. Now, I'm very, very time conscious. So if I don't take time to talk about time relating to generosity, then I'm not being fair to you. I think all of us have that problem with time. We need to learn to keep time, especially we, the believers. I'm glad I got saved when I was 19, just launching out. Eh? So, so in the, I learned to keep time because of church. When we say time, the service starts at 10 o'clock. 955 is on time. The first song starts, you know, they, they lead the first song at 955, which is 
five minutes before. If you come into my office, I have a wall clock that is 20 minutes ahead. My watch is about seven minutes ahead. Uh, I know I wear a fake watch, but it's so important that we keep time. Now, it's a Chinese proverb, you know, God is so fair to us, whether you are white, yellow, black, or red, time is what we have all divided equally. Now, if you are not going to be responsible with the time that has been given to all of us, you know, we always talk about our knowledge, our money. No, 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 this is time. All of us, we've been given 24 hours. So we can start from there, right? It's fair, right? It's not like, oh, I've studied more. Oh, I have more money. Oh, my parents left me this. No. We've all been given 24 hours, right? We agree? So what do you do with it is so important. Who you spend it with is very important. But as we all know, it all starts in the church. So keep time for God. Keep time for the things of God. Next, keep time where you are employed. Hallelujah. Where you, what you sow, you shall reap. Those of you, you, you know, you were talking about employment, employment. We all know that I was an employee before, but one day we become an enter. So be generous with your time so that people will be generous with you with their time. All right? Amina. Now that I'm finished with the time, let's go to the money part of generosity. I've made a lot of money. I'm not poor. People know. I came to Uganda 34 years ago as a missionary. And I I'm still a missionary. Fortunately or unfortunately, I have a big brand, Malaysia Furnishing, and people only relate me to the business, but I, I, I like to I like to tell them no 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 if, if somebody asks me what do you do I say I work for Malaysia Furnishing because I never tell I'm serious I never tell people I, you know I, I don't want I don't want to be there because what matters is that God brought me there. So from day one in my business, which is almost 20 years, I make sure that he gets all the glory and all the honor. It's, it's very, very important. Eh? But it is also your faith and your belief and your testimony. Sometimes we come here and we talk, you know, I, I, I give. And one of the tricks that I've learned from the Bible to be rich is to give to the poor. Uh, don't clap, guys. Time, time. <laughs> what, does the, what does the scripture say in Proverbs? If you give to the poor, you lend to God. Wow. But a few chapters down, he also says, the borrower, or is it the borrower, the land, which is which now? becomes a slave to the lender. Yeah. Uh, you know that? Somebody give us a scripture. 
I, I love to get that. You know, when I preach, I never could. I say, uh-huh, where is that? Where is that? Where is that? So that you guys do that. Uh-huh. So, the borrower is a slave. Get the words right, huh? slave. And when you give to the poor, you lend to God. So, what does God become? Hello, English. What does God become now? He becomes a borrower. And what is a borrower? A borrower is a what? Slave. Can you imagine? God becomes your slave. Can you? Can you? Do you know who God is? He who doesn't sleep, no. Hallelujah. Oh my God, he's called Almighty. And, and Almighty is bound by his word. He Heaven and earth, earth will pass away. Hallelujah. We are all in the same page, right? So when I give to the poor, he becomes my slave. Bound by his word. His word. And I know my God. He doesn't even wait for a second. A second is too long. Uh, excuse me. A, a second is too long. That's how fast he will wake up to provide and pay you back. Because can, can, he, can he really be a slave to you? So that's the base of generosity. So some of us have been doing the wrong thing. If you want to be rich, it's a principle, right? We follow principles. I can be a giver, I can do everything I want, but there's a principle unless I believe and confess Jesus, there's no heaven. So you can be a generous person, but if you don't confess Jesus, there's no heaven, okay? There's also a Amen. So don't come and argue with me. Oh, they are doing this. Oh, uh, uh, uh. Do they believe in Jesus? No Jesus, no heaven. It's a principle. So the principle is if you want to be rich, learn to God. Test him, make him your slave for a while. And see how fast he comes and delivers you and provides for you. Amen. Basic, basic, simple. So now, if you want to be and you know, rich, that's what you do. Now, there is also a testimony of tests. Some of you who know me very well, we just shifted to our new premises. After, after almost 13 years in one, one building in, in Fifth Street, now we moved to our own. My own that I, we bought 2008, it's just that we didn't move there. So when we were moving there, and then, you know, I, I, by the way, I passed a church in Old Kampala. It's a Chinese congregation. It's been there for 15 years. It's not been there. So all my elders say, Pastor, we need to come. We need to pray. Uh, reluctantly, I say, okay, 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 come. come, come. Then, then I've got, you know, these children that I'm always at home with, like Asha, they are about, about 15 of them. All, all their concern was, we, we need to start advertising, we need to start promoting, we need to start, you know, putting all these things so that we can direct the people to the new place. I mean, business for 19 to 20 years now, you know that I've never advertised even once. Eh? Now, this is the test. That is the test I'm saying, okay? You need to know your God. You know, it's easy to come and stand here and say, uh, my family belongs to God. Uh, my house belongs to God. Uh, my land belongs to God. Uh, my business belongs to God. 
There's a reality check. What we call gamba, what we call in English the rubber hits the road, you know. I remember the story the three Hebrew children. And the king says, and the decree was out. They say, ah, 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 it's okay even if you double the heat. We have decided. We will not bow down. The funny thing was that the king was negotiating with them. Please, please. we will do it one more time. Eh? You see the power of testimony, right? The king was negotiating. Please, we are going to do it one more time for you. Just for you guys. That's, that's, that's our testimony. So my testimony in my business is that this is God's business. I am not going to advertise. I'm not going to promote this business. Because he is my promoter. He's my promoter. Because he is jealous. He's not, leave alone he's a jealous God, but he is jealous. My name is jealous. Judges. Right? He's not only a jealous God, but just like he says, I am who I am, he says, I am jealous. So if you have this jealous God guarding you, don't steal his glory. He cannot share his glory. So the, 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 the three Hebrew boys were standing, they said, ah, ah, this is God's deal. Whether we perish or not, we are not bowing down. And you know the fourth person. You remember the fourth person appearing. There's no compromise in our world. You are either for you are against. Throughout the scripture, you rather be hot or cold, but don't be lukewarm. You are either for me or you are against me. Oh, oh you see the, the, the two extreme words, eh? It's not like you are there somewhere, you know. Maybe it's a cut and dry thing. Eh? You are either you are in or you are out. So I said, so I, I, I told to my people, I said, look, this, this business, we've been telling about this business. This business belongs to God and now is the time to. Uh, we officially moved in on the first, but we had moved on uh, February the 15th. Okay. Let me tell you, business is so much better, so good. and this 2021 here, in fact, starting from 1st January, I'm doing four construction at the same time. The funny thing is that three of it is not for me. It's under generosity. So if 2020 was a bad year, Within these three months, I couldn't have spent five, six hundred million on other projects. So, so I know what I'm talking about when I'm saying generosity. But before we reach out, out there, charity begins at home. If you fail to take care of yourself and your family, I like his tone. I hope you have heard it from him, not from me. 
There are principles. Waliwe nono. After God is you. Katonda bwava ko goddako. If you fail to take care of yourself and the family that God has put you in or entrusted you with, don't take a gamble by coming to church and hiding under all this and say, ah, me, I do this, I give this, ah, ah, it comes back. Hallelujah. After God is you. So if you fail to take care of yourself, if you fail to provide for yourself, whatever we do outside doesn't matter at all. Amen. Amen. Amina. All right? Amina. Principles. I'm talking principles from the word of God. I think one of the reasons why I'm super blessed. We're talking money here. Because I've taken care financially my family. First. 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 Don't, I, I hope I'm sharing with matured believers and Christians. There's absolutely nothing in me to boast about me because I don't care. I'm already 61. I'm, my, my days are numbered. So whatever I'm sharing, I want you to benefit from it. So in the right insight. Five years ago, I invested in my son a million dollars. Today, he's worth $12 million. Don't clap. It's not me. Please, it's not me. So I, that's why I want you to take it with the right insight, right? So when, 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 when we come here and stand and boast about money, it's, it's the worst enemy. So don't add to it. You think I'm not proud? Hey, I'm a proud person. So don't... don't don't add to my flesh, okay? Please. I hope you understand. You understand, eh? So it is because I know where to invest first. Many of us fail to do that. I did that when I was not even 55. They needed, or he needed, I, I invested in both, but he needed my money and my intellect and my wisdom. He's in the U.S. US. We don't speak less than three, four times a day. Any little thing. He's 33 years old this year. He'll call me like 7 o'clock in the morning. What do you think, think about my shoes? My wife's saying this color does. That's, that's a relationship. Here. 33 years old. Eh? It's a relationship we have. That's the same relationship I have with my God. Very important, right? Chikulu. The day I got saved, the Bible says he came and resided in my heart. Do you know who he is? There's only one Jesus and he is at the right hand of the Father. There's only one Father and he's on the throne. The third person. Don't joke with this third person. He's called the Holy Spirit. Do you know where he is? He's not in this building. Tomorrow morning I can, I can turn this building into a restaurant. In the afternoon I can make it into a bank. This very building, you know what I'm saying, right? In the evening, I would put a, you know, some nice light and it becomes a discotheque. But the spirit is here. Hallelujah. Amen. And do you know who he is? One of his titles is he's, 
he is wiser than Solomon. And he's here. Consult him in everything you do. Ask him first before you do anything. Pastor, there is two people or two persons, because he's a person, there's two persons that I have to consult. The Holy Ghost and my wife. <laughs> Sometimes the Holy Ghost, I know how to manipulate, but try manipulating the wife. <laughs> Married men say, <laughs> and that's the truth. If I don't consult and I go out there and I get myself burned, when I go home, you know what she will say? I told you. <laughs> That is the truth. And I don't know where they learned that, all right? But anyway, let's, let's go back to the generosity. Generosity starts at home. Starts with our family. Because if you fail to do that and provide for your family, it's useless to do charity outside. Amen. Amina. So I started doing that with my children. All right? Amina. I have enough. My children have enough. My grandchildren have enough. I think I preached that here before. I'm a wise man because I'm living inheritance for Come on. A wise man is one that lives inheritance for his children, children. You know, things to do in life, done, tick. It's not the volume or the amount of money that you leave behind. Because there's only one life, life to live. It's only what you have done for Christ that is going to remain. So when we talk about all this money and riches, they are nothing. nothing. Because the day I die, I hope nobody fights for it. You know, we just buried my mom about uh, literally, what, two months ago now? Even my sibling was, that dress is for me. That I'm not talking about your family, I'm talking about my family. You, you understand, right? It, it's as real as that. So, so what are we doing accumulating all this and then one day you just leave behind? Poof! Oh, you try to justify, I want to have a good life, I want to have a good life, I want to have a good life. So please emphasize on I, I, I. So you go and enjoy I. Don't come and tell me that you're living this for so and so, so and so, so and so. You are not going to be there to see it. You will never be there to see it because you are dead. So take advantage of the time in hand and be generous while you are alive. Amen. Very important. That's what I did to both my children. I did not receive any inheritance from my parents. But I had a greater parent. Hallelujah. And he provided. And as he provided, I provided. Now that I have provided, now I'm in a generous line. And not small generosity. Not small generosity. Because they know, you know, my son said, no, that is now your money. Me, I'm okay. Do what you want to do with that. I'm not arguing, I'm not crying. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? No. That has given me the freedom, the liberty to do what I I want to do. The mother, my wife, she's not concerned either. Because everything is already there. But I started early. 
So I made sure that by 55 everything is online. Now I can do whatever I want to do for anybody I want to do. Now when I'm doing that generosity, oh my God, it is just bringing more and more and more and more and more and more and more. Jehu nisa, jenko mo kugaba, ati jenko mano kuyingiza, ne nyingiza nga kwengaba. I don't live cheap. I don't live cheap. Oh, I do enjoy the fine things of life. But I'm generous. This is where the scripture comes to play. Again, principalities. Give. It doesn't say to who, right? And it shall be. Gaba era chiri kuwebwa. Wait, the scripture doesn't stop there, right? All it says is you just give. And what happens? Press down. Running over. I am not telling you other people's story. I'm telling you my story. There are certain things that I don't agree with our culture in Uganda. One of the things is that I don't like fundraising. If I, if I don't have it, I don't spend. But when I have it, I can spend by the billions. So, so pastor, if somebody say I got in an accident and they're coming for fundraising, don't give them, please. I am so proud of my father. He is my provider. Paul say sufficient. He is the Lord God. Jehovah Jireh. So that's why sometimes it's so difficult for me to break these stories down to you to understand because I've never taken a loan. I don't need a loan. Why? If I don't have money, I don't spend. Then he moves in because you follow principles. Very simple. Of course, I aim high. But, but you follow principles. It's very simple. Master, there's 5,000 here. It's getting late. Send them away. What did Jesus say? What do we have here? Come on, what do we have here? Oh, we found a boy here with five loaves and two fishes. You know the story. It's the same principle, right? You will always, what do you have? What do you have? Do you have a shilling? Little becomes much. You see, we know those scriptures, right? No, no. We have heard enough of those testimonies, right? But make your stand. The Hebrew children say, ah, ah, ah. You throw in and the fourth person came. How many stories do you want me to tell? Job's wife say, you man, aren't you tired? Just curse God and die. You know the story of Job, right? He was not a poor man. Oh, ah. At his time, he was a multi-billionaire. I will not sin against God with this mouth. And you know what happened? In the last days, he was what? How many times? So, these are in the word so that you and I can learn and follow. Generosity. Give. Gaba doesn't matter where. You fulfill that. You do that first. Take the first step. If it doesn't come true, 
if he doesn't come true, he owes you, man. We put him to test on other things. Yeah? Put him to test on this. All right? Amina. My story. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. I so wish, no, I no, wish no, the scripture stopped there. That's where it should have stopped. I'm telling you because I know where I have come from. Seek ye first the kingdom so of God. That would have been so easy. But the problem is we always don't quote that. We quote the scripture, the, the line that follow after that. So what does it say? And all these things shall be. Oh, don't we love that part? Maybe not here yet, but it's coming. In Singapore, in Malaysia, especially in China. Some of those penthouses, penthouses in the condominium, you know, is the highest floor, is the biggest unit. I think one of the most uh, expensive condominiums was in Singapore, $48 million. Recently, the guy, vacuum cleaner guy, uh, Dyson bought that, right? It was in the news. For, $48 million, right? It's an apartment, okay? Apartment, no land. In, in Beijing, in Beijing, some of the apartments are $20 million. Not a house, right? So what they do is that the developer will say, buy an apartment or buy the penthouse and we'll give you a Rolls Royce or a Ferrari. This is the truth, okay? You know, we Ugandan, eh? we would have gone it. Hey, I want that Ferrari. Whoa. A Ferrari, $750,000. Free. But the apartment, do you know how much the apartment is? If somebody is giving you $750,000 worth of a car, do you know how much money they have? You understand, eh? But sometimes we are also foolish Christians. We only want all these things shall be added unto you. But we lost the key. So we don't know how to unlock that part of the promise. John 15 says, if you, if I abide in you and my words abide in you. I wish it stops there. What happens? Power after that. Ask of me. Anything. Whoa. You see where we are losing the key? Abide. Let the word abide in you. Because when you have that, don't seek the plus plus. You, you see, we are always looking for the plus plus. plus, plus. Our entire focus is on the plus 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 plus. Come on, guys, let's come back to the word. Christianity is the simplest walk of life that you and I can believe in. It's not a religion. And we just have to unlock when we believe principles. I'm sharing because that's my real testimony. There's Please, there's nothing to argue about it. I'm not telling other people's story. People come and say, oh, when I give big, they like to, ah, ah. You know, one of the conditions, one of my first conditions when I give, when I give to any form of charity, condition number one, Please don't talk about it because it is not my money that I gave away. It's God's 
resources that he has entrusted into my hand because we are all stewards of God's money, inheritance, everything. You understand? So what am I boasting here? Even this breath is borrowed. Eh? If I can use that term. The Bible says I'm just one breath away. Just like that. You understand what I'm saying? Earth to earth, this flesh will go back. And these 15 years, years of your life, you want to boast? <laughs> there are bigger men than you and I. You understand, eh? So what if I give her nothing because Jesus said, ah, 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 ah. this guy came, he was boasting that he's, ah, look at that. Widow, that old lady, yes. all she did was drop her. A I, I spoke about that in from this very podium before. So don't think you are great in giving. Because God sees the heart of a giver. So because I've taken care of all this, my own family, now I can step into charity. Now I can step into generosity. So, so as, I, as I learn and I I give, I must know that I'm giving what God has entrusted into me. Because the Bible encourages me to do that. Much given, much required. So if you have much like me, I better learn to obey, to give much. Principle, right? It's not one rule for you and one rule for me. The Bible says God is a just God. So if he has entrusted little to you, learn to be generous with that little. A lot of Christians make this mistake. God, let me have a deal with you. The moment you bless me, after you bless me, you will see what I will do for you. Oh, you will see. I can see y'all are laughing because guilty as charged. <laughs> Pastor Peter, you, you wait. When I get this contract, and you pray, pray. When I get this contract, you will see how big this century is going to be. I'm sure you have heard it. Tell me the truth. Be honest, I'm sure you have heard it. Many times. And we Christians, we are foolish sometimes. I didn't say you, I said we inclusive. Eh? Oh, we think we can squeeze and negotiate and twist his arm, you know. Don't waste your time and your breath. Oh, sometimes in today's day and age, you have to be careful, eh? They will say, ah, now if you sow into this, you will reap into that. Be careful what you sow into. Only sow into God. Because he's the only one that can bring you increase anyway. So be, be very, very careful in what you do with the resources that he has entrusted in you. Stewardship. 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 You and I, we are but nothing. Dust. He breathed into us and we became alive. So it is so important because that's how our life begins. Generosity begins with God. 
God so loved he gave so if you love if you love you know sometimes in church here we spend so much of time asking you for your money the problem, you know why we ask you money because you don't love God if you already love God do we really need to put a huge basket like this here? Hey, mama. <laughs> Pastor got this because when he read in the Old Testament, there was a lady that came and gave herself in the basket. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying, right? You know why we put this? Because I want to encourage you and to show you, come, give, give. But if you love God, I don't have to share a single word. Because you know how many young, you know when you're in love or you know when you, you just want to give, you will even cut yourself, bleed to death. Generosity. Love God. God. Love the world, right? And He gave. Second chapter of Genesis, eh? when God created right? man, He didn't say, He said, Very good. Very good. He was satisfied with us. But, but we walked away from that relationship. A relationship that he came in the evening to have fellowship with. We heard him and we were hiding. Where are you hiding? We heard you, we are naked. What? Who told you you're naked? You're naked. Because of that broken relationship. That sin. HB. And we like to now impress him. By making ourselves what? Leaves, eh? From, nga, from the tree. Uh, from the fig tree. And, so that now, now, I'm present, now I'm presenting myself. Now I'm, I'm, I'm covered. That same spirit is following us. Through oh. our generation. The first thing is I want to give. It may not be money. Gaba. Prayer time. You know what I'm talking. It's all oh, based on that. Because we are trying to find our way back to him. And we have learned through the system of the world. To Kwe, bribe our way to his presence. Generosity is not bribing to God. Please don't bribe. Generosity is what God taught the, taught the Israelites from day one. When a brother is in need, in Leviticus, you'll see in Deuteronomy, when a brother is in need, you go and be a shelter to him until, in fact, it's until he comes back up. We are supposed to be generous to our brothers. And that, that generosity spirit, again, is what Jesus concludes in the New Testament. Go and make disciples. When you begin to make disciples, that one-to-one, that one to one, eh? you will know how to take care of your neighbor. Very, very important. Who's my neighbor? Oh, oh. you know that story. The high priest passes. He sees that guy injured. You remember, I'm, I'm going straight, right? He and he had no guilt, no shame. For me, my service is to my God. I know you all are going to laugh again because you are going to be guilty. Ah, me, ah, me. You know, some of you are not even givers, and pastor, they will just quote you, and they say, ah, you, you know, 
You know where I attend? I attend Gaba community. You know how many services with? You know we give to the poor. We give, uh, 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 don't don't come under Gaba community. What <laughs> are you doing? That's what the high priest did, right? I'm, I'm holy. I want to serve God, right? <laughs> Next person. The Pharisee comes, the man that knows the book of the laws, right? Now, now this guy is even above the hype. He actually crosses over. He says, hey, in case he contaminates me, you know. Not your neighbor. Until the third person comes. I told to a stranger. And you know the story. And then Jesus stops and says, Aha, uh -huh, who's your neighbor? That, that is generosity. That is a total stranger. A person that cannot pay you back. Remember this, hallelujah. That's generosity. Don't give and then you're waiting for them to announce. Uh -huh. For crying out loud, I go to funeral services these days and they will announce, Mr. Sekran is here, he's given 200,000. You know what we are talking. You know what I'm talking. Don't give to those that are going to announce. I'm serious. What does the Bible say about giving? Let not your... Uh -huh. Let not your right hand know what your left hand is giving. That's how strict. When, when he talks about giving in fellowships, eh, Paul says, I'm coming. But on the first day of the week, you prepare. You, 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 you start giving at home. Keep that money ready. Not for people to come and ushers to come and then uh, let's sing a right song so that more people will give. Paulo Agama, mutandi ke kuvanga nzia, mutandi ke mutandi kakupala zoku wayo. Temuni na rasanda kama siku. Kwe gama bugabi. Give. Wayo. Knowing that nobody knows, give knowing that nobody is going to return what you have given. Now, that generosity. It's one step more than giving and just <clears throat> appear in the new vision, you know. The, the world knows how to trick us. Place with our flesh and our pride. How can I donate 10 million and you don't mention? That's what the world wants. And so the world has brought it to the church. Do you know that last week I sent this drum set and pastor has never mentioned me? Please don't bring the drum set to this church. We don't need it. God doesn't need it. Do you really think God wants your money? He loves us. He gave. And in the same principle, he wants you to love him that you give. Never wait for people to announce time of giving. By putting these baskets, we are breaking our own laws and regulations. Now, if we don't teach you to be generous, then it's a curse on me. You see now? It's, it's what we call chicken and egg situation, right? If you don't give, you will blame it on me because I'm not collecting. If I don't collect, you will say, look at these guys, they think they're too big, they don't have money. So where, what, what do you want us to do? Let's go back to the principle. If you are giving, don't let anyone know. Don't even write your name on the envelope. Why are you writing your name on the envelope? So that what? Pastor must call you every Sunday evening. Oh. Mr. Sekran, thank you. Your motive is wrong. Seriously, do you want the... I, I know that you don't count the offering. 
Thank you. So, so he's not going to see your name anyway. The money counters, those guys, the ashes are the one that are going to see. Now you know why they let you park in the front. I'm talking the ashes, right? Hallelujah. You understand, eh? So generosity gives where you know you will, they, will, they cannot afford to pay you back. So give to the poorest of the poor is what I'm trying to and say. Hallelujah. And that's when you can become super rich. That's when you will become super rich. When you know that ah, nobody knows what you did. And it's also good for you because you don't know what you did with the money. It humbles you. Our flesh is just related to idolatry. When somebody praises you, that's idolatry. That's a form of worship. Remember what I started with, right? He's a jealous God and he is called jealous. The parable says, the farmer wakes up in the, in, in the morning. This harvest has been okay. Today I must tell them to tear down the warehouse and build a bigger one. And now I need to show them who we are. What happens that evening? The Lord appears and says, what does the Lord call him, you? Say it as it is, you. Fool. That's what he says, you fool. Today I will require you of your soul. Not tomorrow. Today. So I was debating and I said, but come on God, I do that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I said, let me dig deeper into the scripture. So the master is in the garden. He is praying. He is praying. He comes back, these guys are sleeping. Then he says, ah, maybe let me get the two best. Eh? Come, come closer. He goes. And he prays. Of course they fall asleep. That's not the point. The point is this. They open their eyes and what do they see? Come on somebody. What happens? What do they see? see? Oh, they see Elijah and Moses. The, the transfiguration, right? Do you know what he did the first thing? Exactly what you and I would have done. Master. Wow. Wow. Give us some time. I'm going to build three temples here. Idolatry. Do, have you seen it in that light? Let me build three tents. Disciples, just, was it three years ago I say I will tear this down? I will tear this down. You remember that? Now, he's coming back and he said, no, we shall worship. This flesh, eh? desires and longs for worship. And the world and the system of the world has known how to play and twist the entire thing to play around with our flesh so that every time we want to be generous, every time, even when we want to drop an offering, every time that we want to give something, we want the whole world or our immediate world to know and acknowledge us. That's my time is up, but you know we are above that. We are above that. Our call is way above that. We are supposed to be up and not beneath. We are the head. We are praying for Uganda. If Uganda is corrupt today, every one of you will tell, Ah, oh, 
now we are corrupt, we are corrupt, we are corrupt. But at the same, same time, we say, oh, this is a Christian nation. Oh, we fear God. God. So the equation doesn't add up. Do you, do you know why the government is corrupt? Because the church is corrupt. Who's the church? Not us. Who's the church? Me. Because I am corrupt. The nation is corrupt. Because I want, even when I come to my offering and my giving, I'm already corrupt. I, I, I want to, you know, Negotiate with, God. Negotiate with the pastor. Negotiate. You pray for me. If I, if I, <laughs> when I get, when I get this deal, this deal. Ay, 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 ay. it doesn't work like that. Generosity beyond recognition. When they are recognizing, they must only recognize your God who has enabled you. We are so quick to quote that scripture. Huh? It is God that has enabled me to, to prosper because he has allowed me to Increase. But then, when it comes to giving, eh, we, uh, we put God aside. They say, ah, you know, me, eh? ah, Malaysia finishing. Eh? Ah, you know, the Bible says, You fool tonight. <laughs> tonight. Since He brought the increase, He also knows how to bring. My people perish, lack of. So get, get the knowledge. Hallelujah. Blessings.